on this week's UBC From Here. Every year, hundreds of UBC students receive scholarships to further their education. For any university that wants to be among the best in the world, scholarships are absolutely essential. There's so much competition for the very best students. And that makes sense because students inspire professors. And if you've got the best students, you often can attract the best professors as well. So scholarships really are at the very heart of what it is to be a great university. A small group of math whizzes assembled to prepare for a prestigious math competition. We've been running the Putnam Mathematical Competition at this campus for quite a number of years now. I've been organizing it. I've got about anywhere from half a dozen to a dozen students each year who participate and write the contest. And a first year student makes a big splash on Reddit. The approach I took for the question was a little bit different than what you would normally do. Perhaps a normal approach would be just to explain what he was doing wrong and then provide him the answer, maybe some feedback on what he was doing. But instead, I kind of gave him the first little bit and then I let him pull the rope in in order for him to figure out the answer for himself. Welcome to this week's UBC From Here. I'm Emmy Chahal, a third year cultural studies student. Much of the money donated to UBC through the university's Start an Evolution campaign is directed to students through scholarships and bursaries. That financial support has a big impact on the type of student UBC is able to attract. For any university that wants to be among the best in the world, scholarships are absolutely essential. There's so much competition for the very best students. And that makes sense because students inspire professors. And if you've got the best students, you often can attract the best professors as well. So scholarships really are at the very heart of what it is to be a great university. Thank you for choosing UBC. And thank you for everything that I know you're going to do to make this a better university over the course of the next few years. Welcome. We do like to bring the best students to UBC Okanagan, but best can be described in various ways. As you know, we have community builder scholarships, and these are students who have contributed greatly to the community. So in addition to grades, we also look at other things. Bottom line, scholarships tell the students, we value you, and this is why. I received a major entrance scholarship to the school, and it's been really helpful so far because it means that I don't have to do all this worrying about like paying for my education like I can focus on my studies and being involved in school like I didn't want to have to be the person who is like studying and then I have to go to work and then I have to like work four jobs in the summer to pay for my school like this way I have I have like so much time now that I can just use to become more involved and do things on campus and just have time to do fun things. There are a lot of scholarships. In fact, there's over 200 awards in total that students can either qualify for or apply to. And I would say generally that students aren't aware of that. You know, they don't realize just how many awards are available. In total, including student loans, bursaries, and financial awards, we give out about $32 million a year to students on this campus alone. So it, it is it's significant. Now, separate from that are external awards. And those awards, students can apply via websites, parents' workplaces, different associations, different charitable foundations, and in order to do that you have to apply directly to those websites. So in general I think students, if they can do a better job finding out what the awards are, you can take some of that pressure off. And if the pressure is off and you don't have to concentrate on trying to make money, you can focus on your studies. I think it makes it a little more scary because then it's like if I don't do well enough then I'll lose the scholarship because like I have to have like a certain grade average and I have to be involved in school activities and I'm like oh no what if I can't juggle both at once so it kind of puts an added pressure but like I'm the kind of person who already I would put that pressure on myself to do well and I already I want to be involved and stuff like that so I don't think it's too much more pressure but a little bit. There are different types of scholarships but most of our scholarships now have a mix of pure academic and other skills or aptitudes that we're looking for. 
very often we're looking for a leadership abilities for people who want to make a difference in their community, whether that's local, national, or international. And so I think that what we're really looking for is people who are going to energize the environment of the university. And, and that's what so many of our scholarship students do. They serve as a kind of leavening for all students because they are an inspiration in many ways for students who see what it's possible to achieve. When the lady from UC working in admissions or scholarship, she called my house and I, I had kind of been waiting to hear if I would get it because I knew it here on that time and I picked up the phone and she was like, yeah, so I'm just, I'm so and so and I'm just going to tell you that you got a scholarship from UC and then I just screamed and I was so excited and I was just like jumping up and down and screaming into the phone and she sounded just like, just like laughing because I was so excited. <laughs>
Yes, Reddit is a social forum where people can participate in discussions. Specifically, this one was a programming discussion. This is a, a site that you go on often. Yes. And what happened was quite unusual. Let me see if I've got the story right. A student was looking for an answer to a problem that he was given for a class at school. Yes, an advanced placement computer science class for high school. And so he put the question, posed the question on Reddit, and you answered his question. So tell me about that and why did it get actual attention from Forbes magazine? The approach I took for the question was a little bit different than what you would normally do. Perhaps a normal approach would be just to explain what he was doing wrong and then provide him the answer, maybe some feedback on what he was doing. But instead, I kind of gave him the first little bit and then I let him pull the rope in in order for him to figure out the answer for himself. You pulled the rope in. Now that's, that's a great term. In other words, you didn't give him the answer. You let him experience the answer himself. So what was the question and what did you, what did you pose to him? The program he was working on was a simulation program that's used as a case study for the advanced placement course. And for his specific issue, he was trying to make the color of his bug turn every time that the bug changed direction. So for this, normally what you would do is that you'd have to figure out exactly when the bug turns and what you would have to do then. But he was having trouble putting the two together. So first I just kind of showed him where does, what happens when the bug turns and that sort of thing, and then he took it from there. So you basically made him think about it and yeah. asked him to think about it in your response to his question. Right. So what got all the attention from Forbes magazine? That wasn't kind of the end of the story. It wasn't that you just gave this young person an opportunity to kind of solve the problem for himself, yeah. but what happened next? Uh, what happened next was that the entire Reddit thread exploded with hundreds, maybe even almost a thousand comments about people discussing the approach I took and people congratulating me. And from there, Forbes magazine took it and they also said the same thing. You had close to a thousand people commenting on the approach you took. Why did you take this approach and why do you think it got so much attention? I was taught the approach myself in high school. Um, all my teachers used similar approaches in order to teach me what I learned back then. And I felt like it really made me who I am today. And I really wanted to pass that on to other students who might be in need of help. You were kind of surprised the morning after you'd given the, the young lad his, his answer to your question. You looked at your phone and all these threads. How, you were saying hundreds and hundreds. How, how long did it take you to actually address some of these? I woke up at about 8 a.m. in the morning in preparation for class. In between classes, every now and then, whenever I could, I answered questions. For the first day or so, I was getting about 40 comments an hour. I started answering at 8 a.m. and I didn't finish until 12 at night, maybe even further. Wow, that is, that's very exciting. And congratulations on your approach to, to learning. Um, is teaching something you're hoping to get into with time? Yes, possibly, maybe research, teaching, that sort of thing. Are you still spend time on Reddit then? Yes, lots. As much as I can, I try and participate, answer questions. They don't get the same amount of attention as the first one, but it's still a good thing to do. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your story with us, and keep up that awesome way of teaching. Thank you very much. That wraps it up for this edition of UBC's Next Big Thing. Until next time, I'm Rosemary Jean Thompson. Make it a great week. That's it for this week's UBC From Here. For more stories about the Okanagan campus, visit ubco.tv. I'm Emmy Chahal. Thanks for watching.